Good morning, good morning, everyone. So glad to have all of you join us today for our webinar entitled, Show Me the Money. Gonna learn all about state loan programs and probably some on top of that. And we have with us our uh, presenter today, who we'll talk a little bit more about. But before we do that, I wanna introduce you to our director, Jesse Mark, who's in the house today. And uh, he's going to address at this time. Take it, Jesse. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Sharon. Uh, everybody, get in for a treat today. Um, Shandrita Boykins has many, many years of uh, experience in financial services industry and has recently been um, uh, appointed here with our great state of Ohio and is uh, really instrumental in bringing some ground break, gra groundbreaking uh, products here to the state of Ohio for our uh, minority businesses and our women-owned businesses here. Um, so, you know, just want to let everybody know the things that we do here at the uh, Columbus MBAC. <clears throat> we provide training as we're part of today, uh, technical assistance, one-on-one -on -one consulting. Uh, we assist with fast tracks for your certifications, whether that be your uh, Encouraging Diversity Growth and Equity, uh, the EDGE certification, Minority Business Enterprise, MBE, uh, Women's Business Enterprise, WBE, and the Veterans Business Enterprise, and all our all of our veterans uh, that are on the call today, we thank you for your service as we celebrate um, our Veterans Month and Veterans Day coming up here next week. Uh, we're truly honored to be a part of this great team here. And I guess without further ado, uh, Sharon, let me kick it back to you, or uh, is uh, Mrs. Boykins ready to go? Well, let me tell everybody a little bit about our speaker today. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Chandrita Boykins is the manager uh, of business development and entrepreneurship in the Minority Business Development Division at the Ohio Department of Development. She manages the state of Ohio minority business loans and bonding programs, which she'll be talking about in more further detail. She's also responsible for outreach and providing business solutions. She's an advocate for ensuring that the programs offered by her department are the best solutions for the population they're called to serve. In her role, she assists minorities, women, and underserved business owners with the requisite education needed to start up, stand up, and scale up their businesses. She also assists them with access to capital, technical assistance, education about certifications and procurement opportunities to help with development and growth. Chandrita has more than 20 years of experience in the banking industry. She also has five years of experience in the nonprofit sector doing business funding and consulting. She believes in equitable education for marginalized business owners who experience barriers, delays, or denials due to the knowledge gaps that exist for them. She is a resource of resources. She triple majored and has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminology, Sociology, and African American Studies with concentration in African American Literature from The Ohio State University. And she's originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and is a beloved wife and mother of a one-year-old. Come on, give it up for Shandrita Borges. We're so glad to have her with us today. Ms. Sharon, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And okay. Let me put your mic here. Your video on. Okay, I think you have to share my video. Okay. It's telling me that the host stopped it. While she's doing that, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Jesse and Ms. Sharon, for um, asking me to be a part of this occasion. Um, I really appreciate that. Jesse, you said many, many, many years. Um, I have a bone to pick with you. You made me sound like an old lady. And then Ms. Sharon came back and said a one-year-old. So yes, I am an old mommy. Um, and I'm just so excited to be here with my MBAC team. Um, it feels like homecoming to me. Jesse and I have worked together uh, since our days at ECDI. Um, I think starting in 2015 or 16, somewhere around there. Um, and then when I went over to the Urban League for a brief moment, I got to work alongside Ms. Sharon. So just so blessed to be here today. Rosita's new to the team, but 
Um, pleasure to, to see you again too um, as well, Rovita. Thank you all for being on the call. Give it up for yourselves for being in the room. Um, in the room is where information is passed down and given. Um, and we have this knowledge gap that exists in our community because we refuse to go to the room. We have this thing and we tease and say, you know, before we get ready to go somewhere, we say who all over there or who made the potato salad or who made the macaroni and cheese Does the potato have, salad have raisins in it, so on and so forth. Go to the family reunion. If you don't want to eat the potato salad while you're there, there's other things on the menu that can satisfy your appetite. So if the potato salad is not for you, don't eat it. But there could be somebody over there that has a meal, absolutely desired, <laughs> just the raisins, has a meal um, tailor-made to, uh, to your appetite. So without further ado, because I got uh, uh, quite a bit to cover, um, at the end, please, um, if you want to, Ms. Sharon, they can put their questions in the chat. Um, if you want to jot those down, we'll ask them at the end. We do have a question and answer uh, session. It's about 70 people on the call, so I'm not sure if you want them to come off the mic um, at the end, but however you want to run your show, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer those questions. I'm going to go ahead now, ladies and gentlemen. Again, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to share my screen and go through some slides really briefly. Just give me one second here. Okay, beautiful. So the first slide, um, one of our missions here in the Department of Development is empowering communities to succeed. Um, and we do that through several different ways. My area of expertise is through access to capital. So as Ms. Sharon said, I am the manager of business development and entrepreneurship for the um, state of Ohio. Uh, before that, I was the manager of um, business solutions and outreach. And so business solutions and outreach is still falls under my purview. Um, my title has just changed to really involve the development of businesses and entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. Okay, so Ms. Sharon read my, my printed bio, <laughs> um, but what I like to share uh, when I'm with audiences is just a, an a, a abbreviated, a very brief bio of who I consider myself to be a carpenter, an interpreter, a butler, a doula or midwife, a funnel and a farmer. And so a carpenter is one who designs and builds. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that when we get into the, the meat and potatoes, I like to say about these loan programs. I am actually not sitting at the table. People are like, are oh, you at the state? You got a seat at the table? No, ladies and gentlemen, I am physically building the table so that you guys can come and sit in. Um, I am also an interpreter. Um, people don't realize that finance ease is a language. There's a language of business. There's a language of entrepreneurship. There's a language of finance. And when you don't speak that language, you need an interpreter. And that's also what our partners at the Impact Centers are. They interpret the language for you. We have clients that don't understand cash flow statements, P&L, balance sheets, income statements, tax returns. And so they sit in the seat of an interpreter to explain to you, if you go to Spain, and you and it's 100% Spanish and you don't speak Spanish, you need somebody to translate that language for you. And that's what interpreters do. They translate the language so you have a full understanding. Um, a butler, a butler is a person who serves and opens doors. I understand my position. And even though some may view it as an elevated or, or a great one, I'm just a glorified servant. That's all I am. I'm trying to serve you all exactly what you need and open doors for you to walk through so that you can live out your dreams of entrepreneurship and leaving a legacy for your families. I'm a doula and a midwife. A doula is an advocate and a person who provides emotional and informational support. So that's why we're here today. When you're involved in business and entrepreneurship, you're emotionally con connected or tied to that thing. But sometimes there's a lack of information. So not only to support you emotionally, but to support you informationally as well, again, which is why we're here today, that's why I exist. And then midwives are birthing coaches. I'm there to tell you to push when the going get tough and you want to get going. I'm telling you, don't throw in the towel, stay in the ring and fight. So that's how I serve as a doula and the midwife. I'm also a funnel. When things come down from the head, the head of me, when things are coming to market, uh, when things are like Intel, we knew about that information coming prior to. 
and I reached out and told people, get ready. This is what's coming down the pike. So as things come to me, they go through me and down to you. So it's a way to channel and guide you through a process, a procedure, or something that's coming to you that you need to get ready and get prepared for. And then the last thing, I won't say the last thing, but one of the, the latter things that I call myself is a farmer. So a farmer different from a gardener, a gardener in which way? If I garden, I might be able to get my neighbor some bell peppers or some collard greens um, or, or, or some onions or something here and there. But if I farm, I feed many. A gardener feeds few, but a farmer feeds many. And so that's th these are the seats that I sit in um, to make um, your entrepreneurship dreams and goals a reality. The gateway to funding um, from the state of Ohio is through certifications. Jesse talked uh, about it in his introduction. I'm not going to dwell on it except for the fact that many of our loan programs, you have to be certified as one, at least one of these entities to qualify for. So uh, there's a myth um, that we are attempting to dispel that you only get certified if you wanna do business with the state of Ohio. That used to be the case, I will admit that. However, that's no longer the case. There's a business here that is certified with the state of Ohio that does not do business with the state of Ohio and does not do business in the state of Ohio. They do business with Toyota in the state of Kentucky. And so Kentucky recognizes our Ohio certification. They are their only client. And this is a million, almost billion dollar revenue generating company a year. They don't need the state of Ohio's help to get, as far as contracting goes, to, to make money, to get revenue. And so certifications is no longer, if you wanna do state business with the state, any state or the state of Ohio, I just gave you the example of this company who do, does business with Toyota in Kentucky. Also certifications are like a gold seal of approval from the state. It means that my business has been vetted and approved by the state of Ohio. It's like, yes, I'm not just an LLC out here or I'm not just a, a sole proprietorship out here. The state acknowledges me as being a viable and a real business. Um, and then again, certification leads you to access to capital, access to contracts, access to contacts um, and access to exposure for your business. You all have heard it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. And so when you are certified, you are added to our databases. So if other businesses or consumers are looking for certified industries to do something for them, they can go out to Ohio Buys and see that these businesses are certified with the state of Ohio and they could select you to be a service provider or a supplier for them. So the MBE, which is our, our Minority Business Enterprise Certification, our WBE, which is our Woman Owned Business Enterprise Certification, our EDGE, which is Encouraging Diversity, Growth and Equity, and then our VBE, which is our Veteran Friendly Business Enterprise. So you don't necessarily have to be a veteran, but you could have majority of your staff, key person, personnel, board members, so on and so forth, be veterans and still certify your business as a Veteran Friendly Business Enterprise. And again, the MBAC centers, can expedite these certifications for you and they can go more into detail about the benefits of certifications and they also hold your hand and walk you through the process of packaging the information for your certifications. Now, there are people on the call who were previously certified or people on the call who um, went to become certified but thought the process was too cumbersome. We asked for too much. That has been reduced from 26 sheets of paper, 26 pieces of information to 13. The process is different. And I'll tell you this, there's never a better time in the state of Ohio to become a certified entity than now. And let me pause right there and put a pin because I get a lot of requests of, from people for loans saying that they are certified with the state of Ohio and they're not. They are registered through the Secretary of State as an LLC, a sole proprietorship, a corporation through the state of Ohio. And at the top of that paper they give you, it says certificate. So I think that that's where the wires get crossed, but that is a registration, not a certification. 
certifications come through our MBAC Center. So if you are not certified, I want you to immediately reach out to Jesse, Miss Sharon, Rosita, any member of the MBAC staff, and ask about the certifications that you qualify for. And it's beneficial to you and behooves you that every category that you meet, if you are a minority, a woman, if you are socially and economically disadvantaged under our age program guidelines, and if you are a veteran, that you get all four certifications. There are loans, there are grants, and there are other opportunities for these certified entities um, that are not open to anybody. There are specific set-asides. The state right now has a 15% set-aside goal, which is the basement, not the ceiling, for minority business enterprises, which means there are certain jobs that they set aside that a minority business enterprise must fulfill. So if for no other reason than that, that's a great reason to get certified. Now, um, now we can get into my babies. So two of our newest financial programs, when I came to the state almost 18 months ago, uh, all we had were the names of these programs. We knew that we wanted to have a micro loan program and we knew that we wanted to have a women's business enterprise loan program. Now, let me back up before I get into the meat and potatoes about these loan programs. The state of Ohio currently does not have a loan above 3% interest. No matter the amount of the loan, none of our loans are above 3%. That is significantly lower than the industry average. Um, and that's about a third of the interest that you're gonna pay for a bank loan. Um, we do not ask for your social security number. Therefore, we do not pull your personal credit. We do not ask for your Dun & Bradstreet number. Therefore, we do not pull your business credit. We are basing our decision off of the following. What does their historical cash flow look like? What do their interim financials look like? And what are they projected to do over the next 12 to 36 months, depending on the loan program? So do your projections make sense? Um, year over year, you wanna show about a 5% increase between one and 5% in the numbers to keep on pace with inflation. Um, some people will say, hey, I made $70,000 this year as a travel agent next year, I'm projected to make 1.7 million. That's not gonna get you approved. You can't go from 70,000 to 1.7 million. Just does not make sense for the industry and it does not make sense with the average growth year over year. So again, we're going to determine our decision based on your ability to service the debt. What do your historical financials look like? What are your interim financials looking like? If there's been some, because we know 2020, 21 was crazy. So if we know that your industry has been through some turmoil or tumultuous times during the pandemic, we're gonna take that under consideration and into advisement. So we're gonna lean heavily on what do your current financials look like? What do the last nine, 10, 11 months look like? And what are you trending and pacing to do again in the next 12 to 36 months? If those numbers make sense for the dollar amount that you're asking for, you're gonna get a yes from us. If those numbers don't make sense for the dollar amount you're asking for, we're going to counter offer you an amount because the goal is to say yes. The goal is to run out of this money. Therefore, when we go back and ask for more, we can prove that we did right and good by this money the last time we had it. If we don't give it all away, we don't get it all back. If we give it all away, you know what I mean by give it all away, loan it all out. Then when we go back and ask for more, then we have justification of why they should actually give us more. And so I wanted to say that because I know in our community, we have credit challenges, um, and so these loans, we took that out of the equation. We're removing barriers. That's what I mean by building the table. I actually had my hammer and nails out building these two loan programs because I am you. I am young, regardless of what Jesse says. I'm young, I'm a minority, and I'm a female, and I'm an entrepreneur. So I check all of the boxes. And if I was a person that wasn't building the table, this is the table that I would want to sit at. And so for our Ohio microloan program, um, we loan between ten dollars and $45,000 at 0% interest for five years for any business expense. 
It's working capital. It is any business expense. We will give you between or loan you between $10,000 and $45,000 at 0% interest. If you get the top of that loan at $45,000, that's $750 a month for five years, no early prepayment penalty. So if you want to pay it off sooner, you can and will not be penalized. The Women's Business Enterprise Loan Program. It is between $45,000 and $500,000. Now with this program, we only loan 75% of the total project cost. So if you are using your money to uh, purchase a building, to purchase land, to purchase equipment and machinery, to do renovations or um, leasehold improvements, we're gonna lend you 75% of that total project cost. 10% equity is required from you. The other 15% could come from you or it could come from a third party lender like a CDFI or a bank or something like that. So in essence, if your total loan project cost is $100,000 and you meet the guidelines, the bank will give you 75,000 the other $25,000 you're responsible for. With the Women's Business Enterprise Program, and again, in the beginning, I told you I'm building programs and these programs are always evolving. I'm working right now on the microloan program to raise the amount. I don't think $45,000 is enough for working capital. So I'm looking to potentially raise that to double. Um, with the Women's Business Enterprise Loan Program, I went back to the table and I said, hey, listen, Women tend to carry the burden of debt in the family because we're the shoppers. As a result of that, when we go into traditional lending organizations, we usually get the low end of the, the, the stick. We get the bad end of the stick. We get the higher interest rates because we have the lower credit scores. Interest rate determines the payment. So then we have higher payments. So it's not putting us in a better debt or cash flow situation. I said, can we possibly amend this women's business enterprise loan to include debt refinance? Can we refinance high interest business debt under this women's business enterprise loan? My boss ran that to her boss, who's the director of the entire Ohio Department of Development. And before she could finish pretty much getting it out, she agreed to it because she caught it and she understood it, that we have to do something to put these women in a better financial position. And so now under that loan program for the borrowing cause of refinancing debt, we will refinance debt at 100% if it makes sense to, to better your cash flow and put you in a better debt position. So not only are we building, or not only am I building the table, I'm going back to make sure the table is still sturdy. I'm going back to make sure it doesn't need different measurements or to be cut at different angles, or it needs to be trimmed down or added to to fit to this door or to fit in this room. So these are ever evolving uh, programs. They're not just static. We have the ability when it's policy, we have the ability to manipulate them just with a decision. Now, some of our loans are statute, which means it's law and it has to be voted on. But these particular programs that I helped to build are policy programs. And we're looking again to ever evolve these programs to benefit the people that they're built to benefit. And so um, we had a lady, she had a, a transportation business, 54% interest was her interest rate. She was in a predatory loan and it was an interest only loan. So she was paying about $4,500 a month just an in interest. The way to eradicate a, the, the interest is to pay the principal. She was not even touching the principal because the interest only loan payment was so high. We took 54% and reduced that to a 3% interest rate. We changed this lady's life. And so that's the power of these loan programs, not just because it's business, whatever, this is life-changing things that we're doing for individuals here. If you are certified as a women business enterprise, um, you will have a 1.5% interest rate. If you are not certified as a WBE under this program, your interest rate will be 3%. And on the micro loan, um, again, you must be MBE or WBE certified in order to qualify for those programs. 
These other financial assistance programs, our Minority Direct Loan Program is our oldest loan program. You must be MBE, Minority Business Enterprise Certified, to qualify. There is, um, it kind of works like the WBE loan. We only fund 75% of the total loan project. These loans go from 45,000 to 1.5 million, and it can be used for leasehold improvements, renovations, purchase of land, purchase of commercial property, um, machinery and equipment. We are trying to lower this interest rate from 3% to 1.5% because we understand that the same barriers that exist for women also exist for minority males. And so we wanna reduce that interest rate again from 1.5%, I'm sorry, from 3% to 1.5%. And we also want to allow debt refinance under this program. Those two things have not been added yet. So I say yet in hopes that um, as we're running different things up the chain, they will eventually evolve. The Minority Business Direct Loan Program is a statute. It is a law. And so it will take longer to make those changes if they're going to be made than it would a policy loan like the WBE or the micro loan. We also have our minority business bonding program that I cover, which is typically for construction workers, manufacturers. And what it does is give you a surety bond um, that kind of allows people to trust that they can do business with you and that you have the backing. A lot of our minority businesses don't have the capital up front to compete with the big boys or the big players. And then some organizations require that you are bonded and insured before they will accept a contract or a bid from you. And so we have bonding lines up to $1 million and you could do multiple projects under that bonding line. So if you have a project and you need a $35,000 bond for one, you need a $50,000 bond for another, and you need a $20,000 bond for another, you could be working on three deals at one time under our minority business bonding program. Now our CEP, which is our collateral enhancement program, and our OCAP, which is our Ohio Capital Access programs, those programs are not programs where we face the customer. Those are programs where we deal directly with the financial institution. So what you would do if you were interested in one of those loan programs is you would go into a financial institution and it has to be a state depository. That does not mean that it is a financial institution open in that state. That's not what it means. There are several banks that are not on the state depository list. So you would have to go into a financial institution that is a state depository, give them your business plan, show them your financials. It could also be a CDFI like ECDI. And they could say, oh, great, we love you so-and-so. We wanna do business with you, Jesse Mark. Your plan looks great. Um, however, you're a new business or there's a shortfall in collateral or you know, here's, here's an area of opportunity. We're gonna reach out to the state of Ohio and see if they will back us in backing you. And so then they come to us and they say, um, hey, we love Jesse Bart. We wanna assist him. Will you help us? We take a look at the deal, we like it, and we back the bank. They determine the interest rate and they determine the term of the loan. We don't have anything to do with that. So again, these programs are on our website and we can send you lists for state depositories, but we don't initiate the the, 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 um, the conversation with you, that's between you and a financial institution. And they will involve us on the back end if they need to. And uh, this, is, this is something that is, has come back around. Our state small business credit initiative, which is also affectionately known as SSBCI. Um, the state of Ohio, our Department of Development was recently awarded $182 million um, to assist minority women and veteran owned businesses. And so with that, there are four programs under the Department of Development. Two of those programs are from our division, division which is the Minority Business Development Division. And then two of those programs will be administered by other divisions as well. So our two programs that will be funded directly from us is going to be CEP 2.0 and the CDFI Loan Participation Program. So 
if y'all can keep a secret, I don't know, it's 88 of y'all on this call. If y'all can keep a secret, I'll tell you this. So CEP 2.0 is going to operate just like CEP 1.0, but there's going to be different dollar amount ranges that we're going to um, make allowable for the financial institutions under that program. Now, the CDFI Loan Participation Program, um, one of the things that we wanted to do, there are some areas that minority businesses or industries where we just have no presence. Uh, one of those is commercial real estate and residential real estate development. And so under this CDFI loan participation program, again, this is a secret, we are looking to be able to encourage the CDFIs that we fund for them to create a fund where they will lend up to a half a million dollars for individuals who want to construct, that means you have to build a uh, mixed use property. So that is both commercial and residential. I'm sure if you guys have driven along high streets um, in the short north, you see like a white castle on a bottle and then apartments on top, or you'll see some kind of restaurant or retail space on the bottom and then apartments uh, or residential units on top, that's what a mixed use property are. Uh, I'm sorry, that's what a mixed use property is. So yes, you will have to come to the table because we are participating in that. We're not funding the entire thing. So we're participating with you, pro we're providing the funds for, to the CDFI to participate with you in a loan program where you're going to develop, build, um, or reconstruct um, mixed-use properties that are going to be retail and residential in one commercial space. And so that's good news. I wish I could hear y'all clapping in the back, but we'll save that for the end. The other thing um, under the CDFI Loan Participation Program, when they asked, they didn't ask, I just went and said, I said, listen, we don't, we don't participate in this development space, retail or residential. We got to get some Black developers out there. I said, and we also have to get some minority minority developers. I said, we also have to get some minority franchisors and franchisees. I said, because what we do is work ourselves to death, literally, because we're addicted to labor. I said, or we work and we build these businesses and when we die, they die because we have not set up a succession plan. We have not set up a, a plan to retire, to sell the business, or to franchise the business. I said, even if your heirs, your children, do not want to run your business or be in the business, if you've built it, they should still be getting royalties from it. So those franchise fees should be going to your children, even if they decide to go off and do something different. Now, we have to build franchisable, pass downable businesses. However, and we need to participate in buying franchises that are lucrative um, and that are already proven successes. And so I asked if we could write into the, the proposal to the treasury that's given us this money with the CDFI loan participation program, if we could write something in about franchisors and franchisees, and I was given the green light. And so under the CDFI loan participation program, at least two areas that we're going to help minority businesses are is, again, that mixed use developing of commercial real estate space and then also the franchisee franchisor space. So, again, back to my initial point, I'm not sitting at a table. I'm in the street. I'm all over the state. I don't want to sit at the table. I want to build the table for you all to have a seat at. And that's what I'm trying to do. And your feedback is welcome. If you feel like this division or department, Minority Business Development Division, is missing the mark for minority businesses, you got to let us know. You got to let me know. Even though I'm pretty in the streets, I keep my ear to the streets, I am you out here in these streets, then there may be something that I'm missing. I might have been sick that day, or I might have been somewhere else and didn't get the news. Y'all got to let me know so we can make sure that we are serving you in the capacity that you deserve and desire to be served to our capability. Um, just a little bit more about that. Again, the loan participation program, it will be a revolving loan fund that's managed by various CDFIs. We have three on the list right now. Um, 
The collateral enhancement program, again, will provide financial institutions on loans made or, I'm sorry, provide collateral to um, financial institutions on loans made to small businesses. The two that do not fall under our purview in our department are the Ohio Venture Fund, which will provide capital to investment funds to invest in early stage tech-based companies. Um, and then the other one is the um, um, pre-seed fund that will support and target investments in early stage tech-based early stage tech tech based companies as well. So you can see that technology is the move for the future. Um, so if you are technology based, driven or focused, you really wanna stay close to this office and I will find out what other divisions are managing those other funds. So you can start having those conversations um, as soon as this is released, it's, it's, it's made public. Um, it's been made public to a degree, but not the details of it just as of yet. And so I wanted to show you that we serve, of course, we're the state of Ohio, so we serve all 88 counties. Um, I know that there are people on this call that are not necessarily in the Columbus region, um, but the Columbus region is here in this gold. Um, our Northwest Ohio Toledo region is this blue, red is Cleveland, Youngstown is this dark gray over here, Dayton is this light gray, and the burgundy at the bottom is Cincinnati. So wherever you are, um, not only does my office serve, but there's an MBAC, a Minority Business Assistance Center in each of these regions. And so you definitely, again, not only being in the room, but being in the ecosystem. There are small business owners, minorities, who are out here just doing things on their own, just figuring it out as they go, stumbling along the way when there's an entire ecosystem that exists for you. And my question to them is, I, I know that's not y'all, but my question to them is, how could you be a minority business owner and not be connected with the Minority Business Assistance Center? It says it in the name, they exist to assist minority businesses. How could you be a small business, <coughs> excuse me, and not be connected to the Small Business Development Center? It's in the name. And so while each of them sometimes cross over. Each of them has different strengths as well in areas of opportunity. So if the MBAC is stronger with certifications, you go to the MBAC for certifications. If SBDC is stronger with business plans, you go to SBDC. So you figure out the strong suit of whoever, of whatever you're, of whoever's offering whatever your need is, but you go to somebody so you can determine what your needs are. So again, their service for you all around the state and in every area of the state, there are multiple ecosystem, um, entrepreneur support organizations in the ecosystem to support you all. Chandrita, if you wanna just take a break for a moment so you can get something to drink or so. Thank you, Ms. Sharon. I will be back in two seconds. If you want to um, look through the chat yeah. also, um, if there is, if there are questions in there for you or Jesse, if you yes. want to address those, if not, um, for the end, yes. Okay, we'll wait for the end. Give me one second. I'm so apologetic, guys. Give me one second. Thank you. Well, listen, I can tell from the chat that everybody is uh, loving this information that Shandrita is sharing with us. We certainly appreciate her. And um, we want to respond to some of the questions that you have already um, have given. One I know was about whether or not you could apply for both loans. And the answer to that is yes. Um, so um, that she was talking about the micro loan, I believe in the WBE loan. Yes, you can apply for both of those. And of course, yes, the MBAC Center is here to assist you. Uh, if you're looking for certification or recertification for your business, um, I did put our contact information in the chat, like email mbac at cul.org. Reach out to us. We have two of our certification specialists on the, the panel today. Um, you've already heard from Rosita Torres uh, and then also um, the guru, which is Kathy Armstrong Sapp. She is on here as well. So. 
um, these are the ladies that you'll be reaching out to when it's time for you to submit your documents and we can certainly help you with that process. So I'm gonna turn you back to Shandrita if she's ready to go. Thank you so much, Ms. Sharon. And again, guys, I apologize. <clears throat> So as Ms. Sharon was saying, I just wanted to add a little bit of information in here about the Impact Center, um, who it works with, um, minority women and veterans, dis disadvantaged businesses, certified businesses um, with our MBE Edge, uh, VBE, and um, WBE uh, certifications. Also assist businesses with loan and bonding packaging services. And this is a great service because it shortens the time and the back and forth. They make sure that everything is packaged correctly before it gets sent in to us. Um, they help you with management of your business, technical and financial assistance, which is huge. Technical assistance, when I first started in, <laughs> in here, I thought technical assistance was dealing with like technology. Like they're gonna help me, you know, with, the internet, SEO, optimization, all that kind of stuff. Technical assistance is the back office of your business. So it's the business of your business. You can be very skilled and talented at what you do, but if you don't understand systems and operations, um, then you're going to make money, but you're not going to retain it. So you're gonna be selling yourself into bankruptcy because you're gonna be focused on revenue generation instead of retention. Or, or, or in lieu of retention. So yes, you wanna generate revenue, but you wanna retain as much as possible as well. Um, so technical assistance, again, we're not coming in and tell you how to paint that. We're not tell you, telling you how to mix that. We're not telling you how to do what you do. We're telling you that on the back end, this is a structure. This is how the system should work. This is how your business should be set up to be optimized financially and as, and, and as a well oiled machine so that you can step away from your business and it still works. So a lot of us are intrapreneurs, which means we work in our business. We call ourselves entrepreneurs, but we're not. We're not entrepreneurs until we can step away and work on our businesses instead of in our businesses. Um, they help you again with access to capital. <laughs> And that's in determining what the right program or product is. All loans are not for all people. So, and there are more uh, ways to access capital outside of through, directly through the state of Ohio. There are some businesses um, where, you know, they need the funds quick or they need this amount. So it's either above what we, we, we lend or below what we lend because you can lend too much money to somebody and put them out of business and you can under lend to some to a business and put it out of business as well a business has to be properly capitalized that's the number one reason why businesses fail because they're not properly capital properly capitalized from the beginning and then also obtaining contracts i think this year across our impact network um, we've assisted clients and this is across the state with $166 million in contract work. So definitely um, in your best interest to be connected with the Minority Business Assistance Center. So again, their goal is to identify emerging businesses. They help you from the ideation stage all the way up to, am I getting ready to sell this business, retire or franchise this business? And their goal is to cultivate and grow sustainability. There are so many businesses. Do you know that there's 26 million um, businesses in the United States? 26 million, no, 28 million, only 20, Two, I'm sorry, let me say it this way. There are 28 million businesses in the United States. 22 million are not profitable. Just because you make money does not mean you're profitable. You're only profitable. There's two ways to look at profitability. There's a book called Profit First. If you don't have it, get it. Um, because it shows you how to take a profit from your revenue first. Um, we were taught that profit is, is revenue minus expenses, not true. And so um, their job is to make sure that your business is profitable. And 
to, to, to be profitable, you have to be sustainable. Because if your business is not profitable, that's how you go out of businesses, out of business. It's not sustainable at that point. <clears throat> Again, back to the application um, review. Your state certification application, listen, like even though it's 13 pages long, to somebody who does not speak the language or does not understand the language, you need their support in that. There's some loan applications that have some verbiage in it that if you don't speak the language, you're gonna need support in that. These individuals are going to be back to my slide, those interpreters and translators for you. Um, and it has nothing to do with your level of intelligence. I don't speak legal ease. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. That doesn't mean I'm an idiot. It just means I need an interpreter. That's why you hire legal counsel because you don't speak the language. Or you hire financial counsel or you employ the services from the MBAC because you don't speak the financial language. It just makes sense. It doesn't mean you're incompetent. It has nothing to do with your level of intelligence or your area of expertise. It just means I need an interpreter for this language because I don't speak it. Um, they give you priority review for certification. They can expedite it um, as well. Now, I have talked and I have coughed um, and, and I have talked to you and now it is your opportunity to talk to me. Ms. Sharon, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Um, thank you guys again. I'm so sorry. Like I said, I'm getting over pneumonia um, in recovery mode. So thank you for being patient with me while I went and got um, a drink. But Ms. Sharon, I'll let you, I don't know again if you want them to come off the mic or if you want them to put it in the chat. I see that there are 70 comments in the chat. So I'm not sure how you want to manage that, but I am here and I am all ears. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Shandrita. I know everybody is appreciative of you pressing past, um, you know, your physical uh, situation and being here and, you know, giving this information. I mean, it is outstanding. Absolutely. And so thank you for taking that time. Um, I know Jesse is on and um, expresses the same. And uh, we do want to be able to address um, the, the questions that have been put in the chat. Um, and so uh, we're going to have Rosita. She's going to be um, posting those right now. So as you um, hear that, Shandrita will be able to respond or Jesse, if uh, you want to respond or Kathy, if you want to respond with regard to certification questions, um, you got you got our ears. So here we go. All right, Rosita. All right, give me just a second to make sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we had a question from earlier in the presentation um, from Jamila. What is your ability to, what if your ability to increase your income is due to not having capital? How is that considered? Does the history or consistency of business flow matter? Rosita, you have an echo and I wanna make sure I understand the question completely um i think Ms. i don't know what happened with Ms. sharon can you repeat it rosita sure um what if your ability to increase your income is due to not having capital how is that considered does the history or consistency of business flow matter in, in regards to the lending portion correct so so yes, it does. Um, and again, when I just mentioned that not all programs um, support all people, um, out for our lending programs, there has to be some demonstration of prior revenue. And so there are other sources that will consider you a startup if, you're, if you've been in business under three years, or if you don't have that cash flow or that income coming in, they will still lend to you um, based on that. But for state programs, there has to be some demonstration of historical cash flow. Interim, like I said, 2020, 2021, we take that under advisement. But since then up to now, your interims and your projections have to look like you're going to meet whatever the ask is for. 
Great, thank you. Um, Marquita had asked earlier, can the collateral enhancement program be used for commercial vehicle loans? Yes. Okay, and then next, um, Mohammed had asked, are there any other CDFI other than ECDI? So in Columbus, um, ECDI is the CDFI um, that the state supports. There are some credit unions that double as CDFIs. Um, I don't exactly have that list in front of me, but around the state, there are multiple CDFIs. So yes, um, CDFI, uh, uh, ECDI is, is not limited to Franklin County. It is actually covers all 88 counties, but there are um, CDFIs in different regions in the state that are limited to those regions. So yes. Okay, and then um, Diamond had asked, um, wanted to know if there are grants that are available. Currently, not through our office. What we are in the process of doing, can y'all keep another secret? Okay. So what we're in the process of doing is writing a grant for a $5 million grant for businesses who do not cash flow for our loans. So if they don't cash flow, or there's a reason why we have to deny them or, <clears throat> or, um, or, or mark them ineligible, um, then we are looking to be able to su uh, support those businesses by giving them smaller grants. Yes. Okay. Not yet. Listen, y'all don't be going out here telling people I said it's a grant because it's not a grant yet, but we're looking to be able to do that. And uh, everybody, I'll add also that uh, when we receive uh, information, on different grants across the country that will be eligible for you. We do put that information into our newsletter. So everybody make sure that you sign up for our newsletters because those go out weekly right now. And we've got a wealth of knowledge and information in there on ways that you can you know, uh, uh, obtain additional technical assistance or, or those uh, beloved and coveted grants. And, and obviously uh, the loan programs that we offer here as well. So definitely make sure that you are um, in the loop on receiving that information as it comes out from our uh, center. Definitely do not rely on grants. Where grants are grants are a recent phenomenon. When the market crashed in 2007 and 2009, it was over for grants after that. Um, so now they're very specialized, very specific for certain industries. Um, so there, like Jesse said, there are some out there. Um, Amazon has one right now for minority businesses. You'll find those uh, here and there, but at the state level, because we're open, open, like there's no more shutdown. Grants are very far few and in between, especially coming through us. We just want to be able to support those businesses who come to us and for and we'll pick the criteria. You just can't be like, oh, I know I ain't going to get approved for this loan, so I'm going to apply so I can get the grant. That's not going to work either. Um, but there will be criteria that you need to meet um, in order that will have made you ineligible for the loan that will make it possible for you to possibly get the grant. And that's not 100% either. Um, some of our grants may require some, you be certified. Like there's different things that are going to have to go into that. But grants, you should, your, your existence should not be reliant on the availability or accessibility of grants. Okay, and then a, a quick question that I can actually answer is um, how long do you have to be in business to become minority certified? And for all the certifications, it does require that you operate for at least a year. Um, so once you pass that point, you can reach out to us um, to get the documents together for that certification. And then also, um, Justin had asked, can you use your credit scores for these two loan programs if it's exceptional? Can you use what, honey? Your credit scores, if it's an exceptional credit score. We don't, ever, we don't even ask you for your social security number. There's no way for us to pull your credit score. We couldn't, it could, lowest credit scores are 350. Yours could be 351. And you could meet the other criteria and we would still approve your loan. We, we just, it's not a consideration for us understood. If you are a new business without the financial filings required for some of these grants, can we still apply? These or are not grants, these are loans. loans. And I think I answered that earlier. Um, there has to be historical financial data. So here's the thing, for you to get certified, you have to be registered with the Secretary of State. 
for one full calendar year. But for you to qualify for funding, there has to be a demonstration of revenue generation. So you have to have generated revenue because other than that, we don't have anything to base your ability to repay on. Okay, just finding here. Okay, so from Darren, um, he is stating that I plan on opening um, February 2023. What would be the best fit loan wise for a startup business and what can I do to better my chances of getting approved? At the state level, it would be our CEP or OCAP, CEP Collateral Enhancement Program. OCAP, Ohio, Access, Ohio Capital Access Program, again, those are not customer facing, those are financial institution facing. So you would have to find a financial institution, start creating and developing a relationship with them, asking them if they participate in the state's OCAP and CEP loan programs and what their criteria are. Any financial institution, bank or CDFI or credit union that you go into, your personal credit, because you're going to be a personal guarantor, is going to be under consideration. So if you're interested in the state startup business program, then your personal credit is going to pay a big factor in whether that financial institution approves you and sends you our way for our backing. Okay. And then this next one might be more fitted for Ms. Sharon. Um, can MBAC assist with a business startup um, business loan for a transportation business. Oh, that might still be Shandria. Sorry, say that again for me. Can MBAC assist with a business startup business loan for a transportation business? Mm. You want me so, to go? So MBAC, again, <clears throat> they are, the state is their partner. Um, and the state does have programs, again, CEP or OCAP would be, because those both deal with startup businesses. So my answer to the last person's question would be your answer. But there are other lenders, um, CDFIs, that will lend to startup businesses in the transportation industry. ECDI is one of those. Um, when Jesse and I were there, we did a ton <laughs> of, of trucking startup uh, business loans while we were there. Um, but for the state programs, it's going to be OCAP and CEP. The MBAC can help you with certification, um, and they can also help you figure out which loan program based on the direction that you're headed in um, and what your time frame looks like would be best for you. Okay. Um, next, for startups that are commercial real estate, what are the requirements? We don't have startups for commercial real estate. This is why I said, can y'all keep a secret? See how hard-headed y'all are already? I said the SSBCI money that's coming for the CDFI loan participation program is going to, I didn't say nothing about startup development. I, and I don't know if it's going to help startups. That's the CDFI's decision. But what it's going to do is allow you to purchase mixed use real estate. You can't just purchase a commercial building. You can't just purchase a residential building. It has to be running the same where you have residential units on the bottom and commercial at the top or vice versa or side by side. It has to be in the same zoned unit. And we are participating with the CDFI. So that means they determine what the program looks like. Like we're just going to give them the funding for it. It has not gone to market yet. That's what makes it a secret. But that's, and, and I don't know if the CDFI is going to alert, uh, is going to allow it for startups or not, because you're going to have to bring some capital to the table too. So if the, pro, if the, if the project development is a million dollars and we're only giving you, giving the CDFI half a million dollars to help you, that means you got to have half a million dollars of your own money. Mm -hmm. So put a pin in that. Um, I'll put my contact information in the chat so you guys can reach out to me directly. But that's that we didn't even talk about startups. So I don't know where that came from. So next one, uh, for a person using CDFI, are there franchisees that they recommend or would a person already have need to have a franchise in mind? Is there a suggested vetting process? 
No, no. How can I answer this diplomatically? No one's handing out businesses to you. If you are interested in purchasing a franchise, there is a process you go through. There's an organization called Franchise Net um, uh, that is ran by uh, Ted Fireman um, that you could reach out to to just start familiarizing yourself with the language of franchise. Listen, franchises come with franchise fees when you're purchasing them. There's a lot that goes into it. So don't get so emotionally caught up on the outlook or the opportunity. Um, at the end, get caught up in learning what it is that you're trying to become a part of because franchise sounds great. Um, we know McDonald's is a franchise. Little Caesars is a franchise. These people make it hand, money hand over fist. They have name recognition. They got a lot going on and it costs a million dollars to buy a McDonald's franchise and you have to buy two at a time. They don't even let you buy one McDonald's. You have to have $2 million to purchase two franchises at a time. So learn the game before we go into taking these steps, we get ahead of ourselves and we stumble and fall. And then when we fall, we quit. And so get the information, understand what goes into identifying what type of franchise is for you. Not all franchises are for everybody. I'm looking into purchasing a franchise and it's a, it's a mass tutoring franchise. You know why? I love numbers. I could probably get a McDonald's franchise, but I don't care nothing about McDonald's food. So it, it's not the right one for me. It's about fit. It's about a whole bunch of stuff for just making a decision that, hey, I want to purchase a franchise. So there's Ted Fireman at Franchise Net. I do not have his information, but if you Google Franchise Net, I'm sure you can get it. Jesse might may have it as well. And then I have a young lady who retired at 28 years old out of New York. She's my franchisor. Um, and she has 10 franchises across the United States. So again, I'm putting my information in the chat. Um, and you can reach out to me directly with those questions, with those questions, excuse me. Fantastic. Um, Rosita, did we have any others? We have related? about two more questions if you okay. want to get to those. All right, then um, we were going to do that and then we will put up the contact information for Chandrita as well as our MBAC registration link. Some of these questions that you're asking could definitely be addressed um, through the MBAC uh, as far as one-on-one -on -one counseling, one of the services that we provide so we can kind of help you as you're making those decisions or doing the research necessary so that you can make um, good and informed decisions with regard to your business. And also, um, there will be a link with regard to um, accessing more information or how to even apply for the state loan programs that Chandrita has spoken about. So um, I will let Rosita finish those two questions, and then we'll put that information up and let you go. Thank you again for participating with us today. Rosita? Okay, first one, um, is there a list available of banks that we can search who have CEP available? Yes, um, shoot me an email with that information and I can send you the link. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the last one, is there any loan for demolition of property and preparation for residential commercial property construction? So we do have construction loans and if demolition is a part of that, then the total project cost, we can roll that fee into it or we can roll that amount into the loan program, depending on how much it is or what they qualify for. Fantastic. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just share that information that I promised. Okay. And let me know if you can see it. Okay, great. Um, here is Chandrita's uh, email and information here. And as promised also the registration link for the MBAC. It's also in the chat. So hopefully you were able to copy that. And then also for uh, accessing information from the state, they have a wonderful website for minority businesses. And here is the link for that as well. So again, thank you for taking your time uh, to be with us. We have um, upcoming trainings 
uh, this week. Likewise, uh, on the 10th, we'll be uh, revisiting uh, Growth Wheel uh, for those who have already participated um, in that program. Um, and if you're interested, you can certainly register for that to learn how these uh, uh, tools can be used to help grow your business. And then on the 16th, uh, get ready for tax season. So we have a panel of CPAs that will be uh, on hand to help make sure that you know what you need to know as you're preparing for the end of the year. Filing your taxes is uh, an important part of obtaining certification. So you want to make sure that uh, your business is put in the best possible light. Um, and so that it session, again, will be on the 16th, and then we'll continue with the growth wheel co cohort for the rest of the month. So again, on behalf of the Minority Business Assistance Center and our director, Jesse Mark, and our certification staff um, that are also on the uh, call and our, all of our team members, we just thank you for taking your time to be with us today. And just remember, we do care. So we look to hear from you and we look forward to working with you. Have a great rest of the day. Hi, everyone. Shandrita, thank you so much. Thank you for the invite, Ms. Sharon. Can you do me a favor and send me the recording? Absolutely. Everyone will get the recording. You get a recording. You get a recording. Everybody <laughs> gets a recording today. <laughs> All right. Be well. Thank you God, so much. God bless. Take care.